Coach Lewis, Coach? Well, you know, one, I think um, this is an unbelievable event. So I want to thank um, Indy Sports Court for putting it on. Like I, I told the guys yesterday that th the way this event is ran, um, you know, the the travel, where you're staying, all, all this stuff, how it's set up, um, it's the closest thing to um, an NCAA environment without – playing in the NCAA tournament and so these guys got a taste of that I hope hope they enjoyed it and they want to want to get it back but it's a fantastic event um, we played an excellent team they're really good I thought uh, you know obviously disappointed in the result but um, we got better today as a team and and uh, we we had that low some of the things like we got to be better at overcoming difficult things and we had a stretch there at the end of the first half that that uh, ignited a 15 to 4 run um, that you know gave them 11 point lead at half we didn't come out of halftime great um, but then we responded in a way that we had not up until uh, today so um, disappointed in the result proud of how we competed because I think we grew as a team and got better and learned a lot about ourselves questions for the uh, players raise your hand we'll get a mic to you right here in the middle Hey, Mason, um, I mean, you had a really good second half, season high, uh, 12 points, I think it was. Um, you know, what kind of got you going um, and kind of how did it feel to, you know, have your first big breakout offensive game, really? Uh, I was just feeding off our defensive energy, and uh, my teammates did a great job setting me up for easy baskets. Right here. Uh, Davion, obviously you're from Indianapolis, went to Pike High School. Kind of what was it like to play out there uh, in Gainbridge Stadium? Question for Davion. Home and play in front of my family and friends, and you know, in this great event, like Coach mentioned to us earlier. So it's just a blessing to be able to go out there and compete with my teammates. Questions, please. Raise your hand. Okay. You know, Davion, obviously you missed some time with the injury. Um, it's your first game back, but how are you kind of feeling physically out there today? Uh, I feel good. Um, I was able to move, you know, back to normal. You know, get my legs under me. It's just, you know, been working with my trainer, you know, getting in every day, trying to, you know, rep out things and get my body back right. Questions, please. We'll open up for a coach as well. Uh, coach, obviously you've said multiple times throughout this season, this team kind of needed to grow up. How would you say that they maybe showed that they've grown up in this game today? Well, they, they got down 23 and came back and made it a game. Um, you know, they, that, that takes something that we hadn't shown. Um, outside of Worthen Arena until today. So uh, we, we, we got um, – we did a lot of really good things. Um, we're going to beat – we play, you know, the 30 minutes that, that I think we're really good. If we play that way, we're going to win uh, our fair share of games. We just got to eliminate um, the, that 10-minute stretch that I feel like really hurt us. Um, but that 10-minute stretch, you know, two weeks ago was 20 to 25 minutes. So we're growing as a team. Um, and this experience today is only going to help us. Right here in front. Coach uh, Hunter Tickle, a Tribune star in Terre Haute. It looked like uh, Bashir Jihad kind of had a, a rough go in terms of getting maybe the looks he wanted to. Or did, did you see anything out there and why he kind of couldn't get going? I know he averages about 19 on the season, had 10 tonight. Well, they, they fouled him 11 times, you know, like, um, and I thought maybe a few more. Uh, and it's, that's part of Bashir's development. Like, he, like he, he hasn't been the guy on the scouting report until this year, and now he's putting up some really good numbers. Um, they had an excellent plan for him. They've got multiple athletes and big bodies. Um, there's not many teams um, that have somebody like Kent with his size and athleticism that can, can guard Bashir. Like, he's able to create a lot of different mismatches um, depending on where we use him on the floor. He did a lot of really good things early, um, using playing off of him. Uh, when we when they went on that run, we got a little offensive sensitive. We went away from that. We took some quick shots, and I think led to some uh, transition points for them. Um, and he he's just got to we've got to be able to overcome those lapses and not you know get all jittery and like we're gonna have to hit some home run to get ourselves back in the game. Just keep doing what we're doing. Um, and I thought once we reestablished that the second half. We're able to play through him a little bit more. It opens some things up. But he, he's going to grow as a player. You know, like this experience today, like he's going to watch a film. He's going to learn from it. He's going to get in the gym. Um, and, and unfortunately, you, you don't learn how to handle those situations until you go through them. And, and he just turned 20 the other day.
Questions, please. Right, right here, Pat in front. Pat, we're uh, we're a long way from uh, the first time you interviewed me when I was a <laughs> senior in high school in New Albany. Yeah. High, right, we're a long way from there, buddy. <laughs> good, good to, to see, see you. you. Still at it. No, good to see you. <laughs> Um, just want to ask you, what makes them difficult to guard, Mike? Well, it, one, they they have um, the unique ability to spread the floor uh, from all five spots. Um, they have five guys on the floor that all shoot 40% plus. Uh, Avila's a, uh, a unique player in, in college because, he, you know, he can get a rebound and, and lead the break. You can play offense through him. He can step out, shoot threes. Um, he has an unbelievable b basketball IQ. Um, those guys uh, know who they are, and they understand their roles, and they play to it. They've got excellent athleticism and speed and some guard positions. Um, and then, you know, they, shooting, uh, the way that they shoot it, they can put you in really tough spots uh, if you're not, you know, 100% disciplined on offense. And every time, damn near every time we made a mistake on defense, it, it cost us, you know, whether it was a layup, or an open three, and and uh, they just put a lot of stress on your defense because of their offensive ability, their skill level. Right here, coach. Um, you know, Davion obviously is a is a good shooter on the team, and you know, having him back in there offensively, how that kind of you know it, impact everyone else in the offense as a whole. Well, he it, it you know we have we went what four games without him. Uh, you know, he practiced twice. Like he, he practiced Thursday and Friday, um, and I wasn't sure uh, after yesterday's practice because um, he wasn't moving great. I just told him, I'm like, dude, you move like this, you're not playing. And then you know, he picked it up a little bit. Um, but you know, his ability to stretch the floor just gives you another offensive weapon. Uh, and you know, you don't want to get too reliant on Jalen and Bashir, and he 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 provides that. You know, just his, his ability to make shots. He went on his own 6-0 run there. Uh, in the second half, and kind of kind of kept us in it for for about. But um, it'd be good to get him back in the swing of things. Um, learn how like the last four games, we haven't been able to run a lot of offense. Uh, you know, we we starting you know four forwards and a guard, uh, and a lot of our things that we had in, um, you know, we couldn't run, and so we were just kind of offensive on on the fly, picking on mismatches. And our guys did a great job, uh, but now we can get back to kind of being who we thought we could be at the beginning of the year. Questions for oh, – go ahead. And with Mesa, I remember in the first game you said he doesn't really know what he's doing out there yet offensively. He's figuring it out. I'll say, yeah, how, how have you kind of seen him in a game like today come along? No, he, he just – he plays hard, you know, and, and that's um, the thing that kind of separates him from a lot of a lot of guys. Like, he's, he got over himself uh, a long time ago. You know, he, he comes from a great family. His dad played at Notre Dame uh, – football at Notre Dame. His brother plays football at IU. He's not tough enough to play football, so he plays basketball. We're, we're really glad he does, um, but he got over himself a long time ago, and he's he's about the team, uh, he's about whatever doing whatever it takes to win, and uh, you know I, I, I talked to the radio afterwards, like and they talked about him, you know making threes, like I see him every day, so I know what he can do from three. It's just getting him to play with that confidence, um, and when they put Avila on him, we were able to exploit that matchup. He stepped up, made some big shots. Right here. Second half comeback. Just how impressed are you with with their commitment to the team? Well, it's been, it's been great. You know, I like you were around like when 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 I got this job. That's one thing I want to continue to grow. And uh, you know, I think in watching, um, you know, you got two programs, and you know, I think Josh Josh obviously is in his third year. I'm in my second. Um, there's no reason why either one of us can't have good basketball programs. We're both in similar sized communities. Uh, we we can support it. Um, and I, I think it's it's good for the state of Indiana. And so uh, we'll try to continue to put a good product out there. People appreciate good basketball. They'll continue to show up. And uh, we just got to be able to continue to grow our brand. And playing down here only helps. We'll take a couple more for our coach or the players. Need anyone? All right. Good luck. I do. Paul one state. second. I do want to. You guys can go ahead. Let you guys go ahead. I, I do uh, want to clarify one thing about um, the suspension of Joey Brown. Like, he is 100% eligible. He did not flunk off the team. He did not flunk out of school. He is 100% eligible. Uh, it is a decision that's been made by me because he hasn't met the standards um, of our program from an academic standpoint. He's a good kid. He's intelligent. He's articulate. 
um, he made a <coughs> sorry, he made a poor decision, as a lot of the young kids do, um, and he's going to be held accountable. He's accepted that responsibility, and he's going to learn and grow from it. And I expect him to be back with our team very shortly once he handles that business. But I did see some things on social media that were 100% inaccurate. He's just being held to a to a higher standard and the standard that he chose to be a part of when he came to Ball State. Thanks. Thanks, Coach.